شاء الله تفضل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلي الحكيم ربنا زدنا علما ورزقنا فهما اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ودخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله صلى الله على سمد وعلى آله والصحب والسلام سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون سلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم um, for those people who just joined us now, um, we said previously that we're going to just do the um, uh, flow chart um, that I showed last time, but uh, Brother Yunus uh, captured that and he'll send it on the chat to us. Um, so, inshallah, we're going to go immediately. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. Uh, Aisha. Um, we're immediately yeah. going to, yeah we're immediately going to go into the uh, names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, now the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are literally hundreds if not thousands of books that were written on this topic at the time when I um, went to write on this topic, I said to myself, what can I ever do that's different from what has not already been done um, with respect to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And when I researched the matter, there were literally hundreds of books. Apart from the fact that uh, our sheikh had at the time, just recently, um, given us his copy, the English copy of, of, of his book on, on the grand names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I felt this compulsion to do something on it. Now, what I have done, um, let me, that is slightly different to how other people have dealt with it. is I looked at the topic and I said to myself that what I must do, I must have a method where there is at least something different in the way that I'm going to um, approach this topic. I felt I had to do something. That I, 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 I couldn't not do anything after having done the thing on... Um, uh, Tawheed and the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what I decided that the first thing that I would do, and this is the approach that I will be using, inshallah, is to give a very basic understanding of the various names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I must say, my intention is not to go through all of the names. Um, 99 names would take <laughs> not just 99 sessions. It would probably, uh, some names can take up to three, four sessions just to deal with it. So it would, uh, we would run out of time. Even Eunice, who is so young, would run out of time for us to do all the names. But to give us a grasp of the basic meaning and just to say, that the meanings of every single name um, 
you will find that some of the scholars have dealt with it and understood it differently. So one could get an understanding or an explanation of the name that, is, that differs from one scholar to the other. But the second part that I felt would be crucial, which was where, well, the first part would be what everyone else has done. They give a basic understanding of the name. But the second part I thought that would be crucial is to try and see the, the names around us in our surroundings, to try and find examples of how these names express themselves um, both within our own bodies and within our, our surroundings. And then the third part of it was to search for practical ways of taking the names and applying it to our own lives. So it's not just knowledge, but knowledge in action. So those were the three components of how I hope to deal with the names, inshallah. So that at the end of the day, we don't only have an understanding, but we have some idea of how we can actually use this information and apply it to our own lives in order to become uh, better Muslims. Then the last part that I thought, and this would be a personal thing for each person, um, it's not something that anyone can direct you to, and that is that to advise people to adopt a name and make it their personal companion. Take one of the names, it doesn't matter which name, a name that you feel attracted to, a name that you feel um, attached to, or, or, or whatever means you are going to use, but take at least one or two names and make that part of your life. Make it your lifetime companion. And inshallah, with the barakah of that name, uh, will come uh, various openings, inshallah. So that is the approach that I'm going to use, inshallah. And I hope that that is uh, understood. So just to recap, the meaning, basic meaning, looking for examples uh, in our surroundings, both in the heavens and the earth and within our own bodies, looking for examples how these names express themselves or manifest themselves. And then the third one would be to extract from the name that we are dealing with how to actually uh, imitate or copy it in our own lives, inshallah. So one of the things that we, we, must, we must know by now, and if we don't know it, let us just make it absolutely clear. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can know himself in full. No one else, it doesn't matter who they are, no human being, no creation can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in total. And it must be fairly obvious if we reflect on it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only unseen, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is utterly perfect in the true sense. Perfection means nothing can be added, nothing can be subtracted, nothing can be changed. As it is, it's absolutely perfect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can claim utter and total perfection. Everything else is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that which has been created can never ever have knowledge that totally comprehends fully everything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't matter who they are. Even when we talk about the Arifin or we talk about the prophets or the malaika, no one can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he knows himself. Of course, when we, 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 we've gone through the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unseen 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond human comprehension when we talk about the actual divine being itself. The essence, when we talk about the essence or the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're not talking about the quality, we're actually talking about the actual divine being itself. That is unknowable. Not only because Allah is above time and space, as we've discussed previously, time and space were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and can never ever apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not only because of that, but because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's utter and total perfection. Now, if it was left like that, we would have struggled tremendously to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah has described himself to us through the Quran and Sunnah, through certain names. And these names are what we refer to as the divine names or the beautiful names, or as Sheikh Hazim Khafidullah um, uh, uh, described it, the grand names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a way of how we should actually grapple with the concept of understanding and knowing who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the golden, the absolute golden, golden, golden key to unlock knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing that's more profound in terms of getting understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than unlocking the understanding of the names and the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously the sifat and the names, there are times when the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the names go inside uh, and there are times when they are, are, are different but we will speak more if it's necessary about the difference between the two. And of course, when this improved understanding, when we get that, and as we get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our ibadah, our devotion, our worship should take on a new quality, a new depth, a new sincerity. Um, and hopefully, inshallah, as we move through this, it must not just result in us knowing or being able to explain what the sifat is or the name is, but actually that it assists us, that this knowledge assists us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we've in a sense covered the first part of the slide um, which says that we must get to know the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't just um, know it and recite it uh, in very nice uh, tunes or lago. <laughs> uh, that's great. Everything about Allah uh, is beautiful. So we should recite it with beauty and with, with, with feeling. But we must also make special effort to get to understand and know. So the pursuit of knowledge about the names itself stands as the very first challenge that we are facing. Now, we come to a point that because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfection, because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's utter and total perfection, knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no end as far as we are concerned. It is, it is a body of information that's endless. And that there are layers upon layers upon layers, endless layers of understanding of every single name or sifat 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I wonder if I should just quickly go over to, yes, maybe I should just do that quickly. The scholars have referred to the knowledge that we have or our hearts which contains the knowledge are covered with veils. We've heard about the veils being lifted. Now the veils, there are two types of veils. You get veils of light and you get veils of darkness. Now, let me just see if I, if I, I wasn't sure I was going to present this part. Um, I didn't mean to put it up like this, um, but let me, uh, let me put it up like that. Let me put it up like that. Ibn Arabi radiallahu an, uh, says that the veils separate Allah's true and utter perfection from that which is creation. And because true and utter perfection does not exist in creation, that the veils make it possible for existence to come to come into being that if the veils were not there then creation would not be able to come into existence for two reasons he says it's a point I wasn't sure even that I, 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 whether I should raise it now but I didn't know when we will get a chance to return back to this point so that's why I'm dealing with it now it's a very subtle point and it's a question, it's a question that may have arisen in your own minds. There's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's creation. Are we saying there's Allah and there is creation? Sure. An extremely difficult concept. Because we know we are. The very fact that we are sitting here, we have been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know Allah exists. So do we exist and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exist? Does that not mean that there are two forms of existence? Now Ibn Arabi goes quite deep into this and I don't want to cause confusion both for yourself and for me <laughs> in the process because I am not even 100% sure that I fully comprehend everything there is um, to be known or even to explain about this matter. But he says that the way we have come into existence is through the barakah and the nur of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the names, we would not qualify for existence because with no separation, the veil separate creation or the names in this instance separate creation from the creator. And it is through the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that 
we are able to exist. Because the first thing that would, would, would happen is in the absence of the veil, our existence would compete with the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nothing competes with the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the absence of the veil, there is no creation. And when we talk about the veil, we talk about the names. So without the names being there, we would not qualify for existence. And secondly, um, he makes the point that the divine nur and sheer power and energy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is limitless, nothing would be able to exist in the presence of such pure energy, power, it would be immediately obliterated. It would not qualify for existence. So if we look at that, the names play a very, very, very important role. Um, and I don't want to go much further than that uh, in terms of what uh, Ibn Arabi has said, except to say um, that And I want to just show the last part of what he says. Not all of it. In fact, I, 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 I don't think I should have raised this. It's, it's a bit too intense uh, for a start. Uh, Ibn Arabi says the last um, uh, paragraph or sentence. The entire creation only qualifies for existence through the existence of the divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing in creation exists because of its own properties except through the barakah and the nur of the divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, <laughs> I'm not sure whether I should pause there before we go on um, and just hear uh, what your take is on, on, on this part before we proceed. I'm going to open up the, the floor now for any questions or comments. Sounds a bit dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I th it, it probably is going to be better just to leave it like that um, because we, uh, mm. yeah, it's a concept that took me very long to grapple with um, and it's probably better just to um, leave it at that level of understanding for now. Uh, if everyone agrees, we're going to go back to the, to the, um, to the rest of what we but we're going to return then to the to the veils of light and darkness Ibn Arabi also speaks about the veils of light and the veils of darkness Uh, getting confused now because of what I put on the <laughs> on I'm actually confusing my myself with the point we just covered now. <laughs> um, veils of darkness and veils of light surround our hearts. Now, what are the veils of darkness? And what are the veils of light? Can we, can we just take a pause there? Um, we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifting the veils. We've, we've all heard that one way or the other. Now, what would we understand when we talk about the veils of light and the veils of darkness? 
I, I'm, I'm throwing that question open to the floor now. Asali? Yes. Could it mean that the veils of darkness refers to things like sinning, things like ignorance, things like heedlessness, and veils of light, which is illumination, such as knowledge, such as purity or sincerity, uh, good actions, good, uh, and increase in blessings. Could that mean that? Alhamdulillah. Very good answer. Is there anyone who would like to add to that, maybe? If not, then the first, the first one, the veils of darkness are uh, very accurately described by our brother Yunus. Veils should be considered as an obstruction. Obstruction of what? An obstruction of the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entering the heart. So what are those veils and what, what are the things that would cause the veils around your heart? And those are the things you mentioned. Disobedience, heedlessness, ignorance, sinning, and, and all of those obviously wrong things. They are veils. And whilst the veils are there, they block the nur and the guidance and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entering your heart. But the veils of light, what are they? If we say it's blessings or whatever else uh, Yunus mentioned there, veils of light is like a protection for the heart of the believer. If the pure nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or just a tinge of it, a glimpse of it would enter your heart, your heart wouldn't exist. So the veils is a form of protection that allows only so much light or nur or Ill illumination to enter the heart that the heart can cope with. So the amount of nur that will enter your heart depends on the readiness of your heart. What state is your heart in? What is the level of purification of the heart? Because if the level of the purification of the heart is such that um, it won't be able to withstand what is entering the heart, then the veils of light act as a protection so that you don't get too much goodness and being overpowered <laughs> by it. So, um, so when we say when we say the 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 the, the the veils of light and the veils of noor, they actually represent different things. The veils of darkness, we must, we must all try and, and have it removed by improving our conduct. The veils of light is a rahmah, it's a protection for us so that we don't get completely overpowered by what can enter the heart um, and only up to the capacity or the readiness or preparedness of the heart to actually receive that. And as you improve the purification of the heart, so you improve its readiness to receive more. And with more purification, you more veils are lifted and more veils are lifted. And how many veils are we talking about? 70,000 veils of darkness and 70,000 veils of light. That's the figure that's being used 
70,000 veils of light and 70,000 veils of darkness. What it means, 70,000, it doesn't mean when you count and you get to uh, a figure close to 70,000, then you've reached that point. 70,000 is supposed to give an impression. It's endless. It's endless. And what we should be doing is to see how we engage in purifying the heart. Um, and by purifying the heart, we in fact um, get to a point where the veils are removed because the heart has more ability to receive what is coming into the heart. Um, let me just see where, where I've uh, left off. Mutasali, um, just very quickly, I'd like to ask Imam Hussein to, to mention that those three states um, of removal, adornment, Tajalli, Tahalli, and Tahalli. Um, I forget what it was now. But that's just something that came to mind now. Uh, Imam Hussein? Um, yeah, Yunus Krapnow. Oh, who does it? No, it, it's as we say, uh, the heart. When you when you cleanse the heart, when you cleanse the heart of all negativity, right? In other words, we empty the heart of uh, uh, of what you call it, uh, jealousy, hatred, and etc. All the negative uh, uh, attributes, which blocks, which veils the heart from from the light coming in. That process is called. The Halli, with the Ha, right? Then once we've taken out all the negativity, we put in like all your, your, your beautiful attributes. All your beauty, we adorn the, the heart by, by uh, taking in all the positive attributes or the attributes of beauty. So that process is called the Halli. Right, yeah. the hali with the ha to empty the heart of negativeness, and the hali with the ha, we put the 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 um the beautiful attributes and the the positive attributes into the heart. So we empty and we fill the hali and the hali, and then the result of that is the jali. The hali. We empty the heart of negativeness, all negativity, and the khali with the kha, we, we fill the heart with all the beautiful attributes and with all the, the um, uh, beautiful attributes and the, the positivity. And the result of that would be tajali. And tajali means uh, you experiencing the, the, the nur that nur will come to you. And the process of that is called tajalli. So tahalli and tahalli equals tajalli. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. That's you very, can still remember yeah, that. Yeah. Very Good deep. Man. Very deep. Very deep for now. We will get to, to some of those concepts as we move along. Um, and Inshallah, uh, Let's hope that we will benefit from these processes that Imam has described and that Yunus uh, reminded us of. Um, so the first step is we must get knowledge to understand, to understand the names better, whatever the name might be. Now, the point has been made, but let's restate it in any case. It's impossible for us to ever totally understand any of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in total. 
any anything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, it's impossible for us to have an absolute perfect understanding. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself um, is able to know his names or his sifat or his actions. None in creation is able to understand and comprehend it uh, in, 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 in the same way. So all we have to do is we have to continue on this path of wanting to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the veils will be lifted inshallah and our understanding will increase although we won't be able to reach perfection ever because that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sole domain perfection belongs only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can become less imperfect as we move become be less imperfect but never perfect. So we can become less imperfect, but never perfect. Because perfection is the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And as we indicated, Ibn Arabi says that through the names, all, all creation uh, came into existence. Um, now we've covered this point, but because it, 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 it borders on some of the other things that we've said, I'm not even going to um, discuss it much further that the sifat, the names, the essence and the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are, are inseparable. You can't refer to Allah and his sifat and his actions and his names as separate things. Allah's names, sifat, actions, and attributes, and, and sorry, and essence is one, and it cannot be divided or separated out and referred to as something other than Allah. All of those things we refer to belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they do not stand on their own. Um, if there is a question around that, then one, one, can, one can deal with it. Um, the second challenge is where we said we must look for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us to do this. That there are signs. Which signs? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala signs in creation in the heavens and the earth and within our own selves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, if you are looking for my signs, look to the heavens and the earth and within your own bodies and you will find my signs. Now it doesn't mean we must stand outside uh, at night and just look at the stars and say, MashaAllah, the signs, Allah created the signs. Allah created everything. Or we look at our bodies and we say, MashaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our bodies. We must find out how our bodies work. We must find out how the environment works. We must not take anything for granted. We don't even understand how electricity works. But we switch on the plug. Every time you switch on the electricity, it should be a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time you lift up your fork to put some food in your mouth, it should be a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have become blunt to those signs. So Allah instructs us, if we are serious about wanting to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must make effort to understand how things work. Because how do they work? How do they work? They don't work on their own. When we discuss the attribute of power, what did we say? Who's the only one that can create effect? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing, not we as people, not any object in creation can create effect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the doer and the actions of the doer. Allah created the object and whatever effect they have in creation. So we should ponder 
and, and, and look for these things. Maybe you shouldn't go so far as to look at the Big Bang, uh, although we've done some of that. Uh, it gives you an idea. Maybe that is a bit too complex. But try and understand how electricity works or your cell phone works. Or how you get the water. Uh, how does water change from, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, sea water to rain water to whatever? Find out how these things work because in there you will uncover how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really is. And we have not done justice to that. So it is crucial for us to look for these signs in our surroundings. Because everything is a manifestation, as Ibn Arabi said, of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that you look at, it doesn't matter what you look at. There's a few names that is connected to that very thing that you are looking at or talking about. The names are not separate from anything. Anything, it doesn't matter what you are talking about. There's a connection between some of the names and whatever it is that you are talking about around you. And, and let me go to the, the, the third one. Um, the third one is simple. Is a simple one, but probably the most difficult one. How do we take the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and emulate it in our lives? Emulate means to copy or to imitate. Now we can never be like Allah, but we must try. We can never be perfect, but we must strive for perfection. We must strive for ihsan. We always try as Muslims, we strive for excellence. Now, there are certain sifat that belongs purely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we cannot uh, copy that. Like for example, the, 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 the name mutakabir, uh, the proud. What, how we imitate that is not to be proud and to be humble. So there are certain things that obviously belongs solely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and other things that we must try like the merciful, the generous. Um, we must try and copy that in the way that we, we, we conduct our lives and behave uh, on this dunya. And that's how we can become true representatives. Um, and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we must do these things and imitate these uh, uh, examples of our mighty Rabb, we must not forget who we are. We will always remain slaves and Allah is always the king or the master. And no matter how you progress, must not make this mistake because in our concept sometimes we get confused with this that when we talk about progress some people have even spoken about and may Allah forgive them for ever saying this that they talk about union with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you become one with Allah no one ever becomes one with Allah Allah remains Allah and we remain created beings the difference between slave and master remains forever like that. The master never becomes the slave and the slave never becomes the master. Where some of the awliya in the past have spoken, uh, that's a different question. We're not going to touch on that for now. <laughs> Where, um, yeah, let me not touch on that. We must get the basic concept straight. Never ever will we be able to become part of Allah or Allah becomes part of us. That concept is totally, totally unacceptable as far as our Akida is concerned. We forever remain slaves and Allah forever remains Allah. No matter how we progress along the path. 
In fact, your progress along this path should lead you to become more of a slave. In fact, on this path of purification of the heart, your progress is measured by how low you are. Who plot is How low you so low that you, you you don't claim anything, you don't own anything, and you acknowledge that every single thing comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, to live your life based on the names and the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's easy. But it's also the most difficult part. And that is what we hope to do when we go through. And I'm just going to um, touch on the first name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we refer to as the first name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Allah! <laughs> the name Allah is the name of the Supreme Being, the only name. It's the only personal name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and I'm going to use a, a, a worldly, earthly example, a material example. So where does the other names fit in? The other names are not personal names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what's the difference between a personal name and other names? <clears throat> um, let me use uh, Brother Yunus again as an example. Um, and somebody's talking about Yunus. His name is Yunus. That's on his birth certificate, and he was given that name when he was born. And, and we know him as Yunus. Um, but you can also know Yunus as the generous person or the clever person or the strong person. Or, and you can give other qualities um, to Yunus that when you describe Yunus through those qualities people will recognize that that is Yunus but that is not his name his name remains Yunus no matter what qualities he has the qualities describes Yunus but Yunus name remains Yunus so when we talk about the name Allah Allah <laughs> we talk about Allah the Ya Rabb Allah we talk about the name by which we refer to our Rabb, our Creator, and all the other names that we have to describe Allah. That is Allah. So Allah's name, there's no other entity that is known by this name. Only Allah is known by this name. The other names just describe qualities and abilities and attributes of this creator of ours that's named Allah. So yes, we, we will use Ya Razak, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, the one who is merciful. The one who is merciful is Allah. The one who sustains is Allah. So these are names, but it ultimately only refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as we go through the names, when we say Allah sustains this universe, or Allah created this universe. Um, we just use the word sustainer, creator. Um, but we don't really know what that means. As we start, and we hope, inshallah, as we go through the names, 
Um, the all seeing, the all hearing, the all powerful. We've touched on some of that before. Um, how powerful Allah really is and how all knowing Allah. So what does all knowing mean? All powerful mean really? As you really understand, just through our earthly examples and looking in our own bodies, we will see, Ya Allah, Allah, Subhanallah, we have a truly great Lord. As we unpack the names, so we see the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not in that thing itself, but that thing reminds us of who is the one that created that thing that is so great, so marvelous, so intricate, so complicated. Allah is the one that created that. Subhanallah. So, when we talk about the name Allah, there is... I was going to just touch on that, and maybe I am going to do this. So everything we see around us should be reminders. Every, every single thing. There's nothing in creation that is not a reminder, a potential reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single thing. And we talk about grains of sand and so on. You never look at a grain of sand. But you can look at the grass How do you change your outlook when you look at grass that you actually see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator of that grass? What is it in the grass that can remind you? How can you create all these things around you that no matter where you turn your eyes, wherever you are sitting, and it doesn't have to be natural things. It doesn't have to be nature a tree or grass or a mountain or the sky. Look at the wood. Look at the plastic. Look at the screen of your TV. Everything should be a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't go and search for, for, for obscure things that makes it difficult. Wherever you turn your face, you actually should be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what did Sheikh Khazim Khafid Allah uh, um, Okay, brought us an absolutely marvelous gift. He brought us the khalwa. The khalwa, we know what the khalwa is. For those of us who don't know, khalwa is where we just use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you now use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way where it is not one of many names. It is the only name by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is known and belongs only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah. And you use that name and you repeat it in a particular way. Um, and the first stage is <clears throat> you put the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like I have here behind me. <clears throat> you put that name up. You put the name up in front of you and you sit in front and you recite Allah in a particular way. Um, uh, just for what it's worth. Allah, you, you, you elongate the last part, the first part is short, Allah, and you emphasize the H or the Ha at the end, and it should be uh, a sequence um, of where you prolong it for intervals of either three or five or seven uneven uh, uh, an uneven number. Then as you sit with your eyes open in front of the name of Allah, you focus on that and you let your entire vision just be focused on that. Then after a while you close your eyes 
and you still recite the name of Allah in the way that we've just explained, and you try and take that and you print it in your mind. And when you say you print it in your mind, it means you remove other things that your mind is busy with or trying to go off. You try and force it out and only have the name of Allah in your mind. And the third stage is when you take the image that is in your mind of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should imprint it in your heart. And the fourth stage is where even the image that's in your heart is not there and the name is removed and the one who is being named remains behind. Now, those are easy things to say. <laughs> Subhanallah. Um, people go in seclusion and do nothing else for 40 days. For 40 days, they just do the essentials of eating and relieving themselves if and when it's necessary and they are supposed to in fact be in the retreat cut off from the entire environment where they only do this now we've been given this and i must be honest i personally have found it very difficult to do justice to this great gift that uh, um, our mercy uh, gave to us but it's such a great gift that um, very few other tarikas have been blessed with this um, and for us to have been given it without having to go through that uh, 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 um, retreat of 40 days um, may Allah make it easy for all of us to benefit from this um, and that we try and go back to it. Now, maybe just to say the last thing about this. The khawa, as great a benefit as it might be, should not and cannot be removed from it affecting our behavior and our actions. If it's only an exercise, where for that moment we get uh, a taste, um, then we've just seen the top of the iceberg. The benefit, true benefit of the khawa should be that we use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the influence of anything that is other than Allah. What is other than Allah? That which Allah created. That is referred to as other than Allah. So the dunya, shaitan, nafs, people, money, cars, everything should be removed from your heart. And wherever you turn your face, you should recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your daily conduct. If it doesn't manifest in your daily conduct, then sadly, all of us who have been given this fantastic gift have not truly benefited from it. So I want to leave it like that for now and ask if there are any uh, 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 final comments or questions that people would like to that people would like to ask because we will go on to one of the other sifat after this uh, on any of the things that we've, we've been said up to now I'm opening the floor to any questions or comments Yes, Mr. Sali, it's uh... It's a beautiful uh, 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 introduction that you gave uh, in venturing into the, the, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to start with a with a personal name. That's why we call it Ismul Ismul Aadam, the greatest name. The greatest name because it contains all the other names it's to be found inside the greatest name, the Ismul Aadam, Allahu. So it's a, it's a beautiful introduction. Shukran. Shukran. I also want to say something. Yes, yes, Jamina. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I want to say from the ayah from the bi'ayi ala irabbikuma tukadziban. So which of the failures of your Lord would you deny? As a messenger, even from yourself, as you kick now yourself and you say done for Allah for the for your uwa, for your uh, for your even for your iman, for for your body, others but you but you can sin, you can work in you know. Yes. Now Alhamdulillah Shukran for that reminder. Um but knowing the ayah is one thing, but we must ask ourselves what are we doing? to recognize Allah's favors around us. So, uh, oh, Tamar, I just want to say that you must always um, be thankful and grateful to Allah for that. Maybe oh, yes. Maybe. Allah say, Yes. Just be, be, just be a grateful slave. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. Amina. <laughs> Shukran for that reminder. No, it is true. Although, we must make effort, even in those yes. things that we find difficult to understand, make, make effort to understand more of the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to be grateful is wajib, is wajib. Yes. Okay, shukran, ti amina. Anyone else? Uh, Mudathir, are you still with us? Maybe he's not. Yes, I'm, I'm here, Uncle Sadi. Now come, let's hear what your comments are or your questions are. Do you have a comment or a question now? <laughs> not now, Uncle Sadi. Okay, all right. Yunus? Um, just with us, Ali's reference to the Khalwa, subhanAllah, and it's so true that we, we haven't really, well, I fall very short in, like with us, Ali said, uh, having to appreciate it and implement and live and try and on a daily basis, subhanAllah. But um, the, the approach that the Sali has taken us on now, subhanAllah, just a simple, um, a reference to the chair you are sitting on or the door that's that's on your house, the, the roof of your head. We take so many things for granted. Um, but what the Sali is trying to allude to that the signs are all around us and within us. We only take the time to, to recognize. So Alhamdulillah, Shukran with the Sali. That's okay. That's where consciousness comes in. Yeah. Shukran, shukran for those kind words. May Allah make me worthy of it. Um, uh, Auntie Aisha? Kasali? Yes, yes. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, Kasali was speaking about uh, the halwa that we got. Yes. So uh, I remember many years ago when we, when we received this from, um, from Sheikh. Uh, I was a bit, I was a bit younger that time, and I was very small actually. <laughs> yes, you were. So I actually didn't know what I was doing even in the moment yes. in that time. So Alhamdulillah, uh, through the classes we had now the monotheism and the tawheed, we um, personally, I have now, um, if I must sit in another halwa again, inshallah, it will be a totally different experience because when we, even if I do it on a daily basis or alone. It's something different now. The, 
through the knowledge we got alhamdulillah the little we've we've learned alhamdulillah um um all i can say is the salia is is lifting so many veils already <laughs> um yes i didn't understand the halwa i sat in it and i copied and imitated it but i didn't really understand it like i understand it now and it obviously now i'm when i look at the sali gave me that um allah with the printed out so i'm already thinking now i'm gonna stay at it and i'm gonna start my halwa at home <laughs> No. Yes, so alhamdulillah, no. shukran for lifting so many veils. Yes, and mm -hmm. I and I knew before the class started that uh, learning about the sifats, you have to implement it. Uh, and I never thought of it in that way until in the tawheed classes when you mentioned that. So it stuck in my head. And when I explain it to others what I've learned, I also tell them, Allah is all seeing, Allah is all hearing, and how you should implement that attribute not listen to gossip and 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 things so alhamdulillah shukran alhamdulillah. Uh, i just want to say aisha in the article the complete article on what is the khalwa is um, in that uh, book five the orange book oh, oh. the orange book okay. that is um, uh, okay. hidden secrets that there's an oh, article yeah? that explains the halwa. I would advise you yes. to read through the article and yes. you can implement this um, in your own way by putting that in front of you. And don't complicate it. Just think of Allah. Just think of Allah. Mm -hmm. And try mm -hmm. and if you succeed in blocking out what is happening around you, you've already made a lot of progress. And everyone's progress is between them and Allah. You know, you don't have to show me or anyone else what you've done. And mm -hmm. Allah will make you progress mm -hmm. in the veils. Um, that is between you and Allah. But you must make the effort. But this article will help you uh, to just explain it. Yeah, explain it a, 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 bit, uh, in a bit more detail. Uh, and then when you practice it, then you know that, uh, you know, what are the steps that you have to follow, inshallah. Inshallah, shukran. Of one, one. Um, okay. Uh, any... Uh, Tasali. Yes, Imam Hussein. Tasali, uh, a last comment. Yes. The, 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 the khalwa, the khalwa is, is, is actually a means of, 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 um, implementing your your tawheed which you've learned all the tawheed you've learned to implement that tawheed can be found in the khalwa in the khalwa that's why they say the path of the shadaliya is the shortest path to allah subhanallah and and allah has really blessed the mashaykh of the Shadaliya to come up with this novice idea, if you can call it like that. Um, because no other tariqa has got this. Yeah. That's why we say this is the shortest way to Allah. And us omana us kanim yeswa lang pat lupi. Us pakia kot pat na Allah tu. In 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 the halwa is really the means to that. You see, and if you want I to implement your tawheed, the halwa is the way to implement it. Can, can those of us who are able to do it in a more structured way, can we take the the, the understanding of the halwa and our zavia and start um working on putting more effort in it so that we can implement it and maybe even if we don't do it every week we do it once a month even but we do it properly and with more understanding and more tawheed and proper akida subhanallah i think we will all benefit from it so maybe we must put time aside um 
and, and commit ourselves as we are here as a group that we're going to actually make time to uh, uh, get back to the Chalwa and, and, and give it the attention that it requires from us. So, um, we've come to the end of, uh, of the session. Um, I want to conclude on this note. I've spoken about it previously. Um, the next sifat, uh, next name. Um, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm actually showing it now. Um, oh, you can't see. Yes, we can't see your you can't illuminated face. <laughs> oh, oh, my, my, uh, my video is off. Yes. Now the, the the next one. You know, it's one of the simplest ones. Is on on on, on uh, yeah on all hearing. Now, when we explain how the ear works, you know what my daughter said to me because she sat in one of the classes that I. I, I presented or, or one of the sessions previously on this. He said, she, she said to me, Daddy, but it sounds like more like a biology lesson than a lesson about the dean. So I said to her, but do you see biology as separate from the dean? If you look at how the ear really works, you mustn't uh -huh. look at your ear. You must look at Allah as the creator of that ear. Then you will marvel at the ear. You know, you don't even have to look at other parts of your body. Every time you look, you must actually look at your ear. Look at your ear. Let your ear be a reminder. And your eyes and, and whatever. But we're going to speak about these things so that it sounds like, uh, it's going to sound a bit like... Uh, uh, going to school or a biology class or, or whatever, but try and look at how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really is. Let, let the, 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 the knowledge and the power and the ingenuity and the creativity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let, let it hit you when you look at these things. Allah wouldn't have pointed to the body if there wasn't all these secrets locked up in there. And we will go through some of these things and see how we can unlock some of that. And once you see how great it is, then be even more committed to extract what you can take from that to implement uh, in your lives. We've done this um, all hearing uh, already when we dealt with this father of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's good to go over it again just to understand and then extract uh, the practical benefits of how it can change our lives. Shukran to everyone for your time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us um, to implement and to benefit from these sessions. All of us. Um, we're going to ask uh, Imam Hussein to determine who's going to make the dua. <laughs> <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا وفي نعمة كافي مزيدا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله اللهم صل صلاة محسنة وسلم سلاما محسنا على سيد المحسنين وإمام المحجلين سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أنت العارف عرفنا بك يا الله اللهم أنت العارف عرفنا بك يا الله اللهم أنت العارف عرفنا بك يا الله اللهم رزقنا معرفتك يا الله اللهم رزقنا معرفتك يا الله 
اللهم ارزقنا معرفتك يا الله اللهم انت ربي لا اله الا انت عليك توكلت وانت رب العرش العظيم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلي العظيم ما شاء الله كان ما لم يشاء لم يكن اعلم ان الله على كل شيء قدير وان الله قد احاط بكل شيء من علم واحصى كل شيء عددا اللهم إني أعوذ بك من شر نفسي وأعوذ بك من شر كل دابة أنت أخذ بناصيتها إن ربي على صراط مستقيم انصرنا فإنك خير الناصرين وافتح لنا فإنك خير الفاتحين واغفر لنا فإنك خير الغافرين وارحمنا فإنك خير الرحمين ورزقنا فإنك خير الرازقين وحسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سلام على نوح في العالمين استجب لنا آمين فقطع دابر القوم الذين ظلموا والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي النبي رحمة وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين شكرا برادة مداثير Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you and for all of us inshallah and until we uh, meet again Wednesday. I don't know what we're going to do if the lockdown is over, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allow us the opportunity to share as much as we can. Shukran to everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran to you, Tamani. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran, Tamani. Shukran. Shukran, shukran. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Nice. Aisha.